friends welcome to my youtube channel friends today we are going to discuss the fluctuating or alternating stresses so without wasting time let's start the topic so first thing that we have to know about the fluctuating stress is that they are time varying in nature that is the magnitude of these stresses are varying with time or their direction may also vary with time so it is very evident from these graphs of the stresses which all denotes the fluctuating stresses this is the case number 1 of fluctuating stresses this is the case number 2 this is the case number 3 and this is the case number 4 of fluctuating stresses there can be more cases of fluctuating stresses like the stresses which are purely compressive in nature these stresses also come under the category of the fluctuating stresses so all these cases are discussed here now the second point is they follow a sinusoidal variation that is sinusoidal variation that is the variation of these stresses is according to the variation of a sine wave this is the sinusoidal variation and the third thing is that they value from a maximum value of stress to a minimum value of stress it is very clear that they are varying from for from a maximum value of stress to a minimum value of stress okay in all the cases and the third thing is the fourth thing is the sign convention sign convention so according to the sign convention friends the stress is which lie above the time axis are denoted by plus sign that is they are positive and the stresses which lie below the time axis are considered to be negative in nature okay now let us see the next concept here we are going to find out the two two terms related to the fluctuating stresses the two terms are number 1 is the mean stress mean stress and number 2 is the stress amplitude here mean stress is denoted by sigma m and the stress amplitude is denoted by sigma a now let us define these two terms mean stress is given as sigma max plus sigma min divided by 2 where stress amplitude is given as sigma max minus sigma min divided by 2 here one thing is to be kept in your mind that the sigma max and sigma min should be substituted with sign and a sign convention i have already told you now let us take a case to find out the mean stress for the case number 2 so in case number 2 we are going to find out the mean stress suppose that sigma max for case number 2 that is case number 2 this case is equal to plus 2 and the sigma min is equal to minus 1 units now we know that sigma max the value of mean stress sigma m is equal to sigma max plus sigma min divided by 2 so it will come out to be 2 unit plus minus 1 divided by 2 is equal to 1 by 2 and the value of sigma m sigma a that is the stress amplitude is equal to sigma max minus sigma min divided by 2 which is equal to 2 minus minus 1 divided by 2 which is equal to 3 by 2 so we will identify these two term in the diagram sigma m and sigma a so 
our sigma m is 1 by 2 that is it is the average of this curve so it will lie somewhere here okay friend this is the sigma m and sigma a is the height of the variation of the diagram that is the height of the variation of the diagram divided by 2 so it will be equal to this is the height of the variation and divided by 2 so i will rub this line to half of the length so this is equal to sigma a and similarly we can find out sigma m for this graph also sigma m will lie somewhere here that is this is equal to sigma m that is the average of the graph and the sigma a that is the height of the graph that is the variation of the graph is equal to this value because this is the minimum value of stress this is the maximum value of stress and the height of the variation sigma a is equal to two times this is equal to two times the height of the variation so i will rub this line to half of the length so it will give me sigma a so these things we have to keep in mind friends because the value of sigma m and sigma a are very important because they will be used in the Soderberg diagram and the Goodman diagram to design the component on the basis of the fluctuating stresses also friend this is a very important topic from the gate point of view because these topics should be understood very clearly so that you will be able to solve the problem which will be asked in the great problem on the basis of the solder work and the Goodman diagram here sigma m and sigma a are very important so you have to learn how to find out this where the value of sigma m and sigma a and also friend i want to clear here that the two diagram which are very important here is the diagram number one the diagram number two because these are the diagram of fluctuating stresses that are used in the Soderberg diagram and the Kordberg diagram and the rest two diagram are these the, this is the case of the fluctuating stress which corresponding to the completely reverse loading condition because half of the diagram half of the part of the cycle is lying above the time axis and half part of the cycle is lying below the time axis for this diagram and for this diagram this is the case of repeated stress because sigma minimum is zero here and whole part of the diagram is lying on the time axis and in this case the stresses are partially tensile in nature and partially compressive in nature so all these things are comes under the category of fluctuating stresses and this is also another case of the stress in which the stresses are purely compressive in nature so we will not see this type of graph in the further lecture videos because this is very rare because the negative loading is considered to be as positive loading here we can uh, rub this thing and plot this thing like this so it is same because the solving problem for this loading is same as problem pro solving problem for this loading so we will consider this type of loading as this type of loading only okay friend so this was all for today's topic thank you friends for watching my video friends if you like my video then you can subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon so thank you friends